Should a Christian plant by the signs of the zodiac? I know a lot of people actually that do this that profess to be Christian, so I thought I should make a video um, to show from the scriptures that the answer is a definite no. And I'm going to show you the scriptures today. Many years ago, I read a book called The Foxfire Book. I had a paperback edition and uh, a lot of interesting things in there for sure. And uh, we were able to get some in hardback, found some at a, you know, used. And um, here's the original Foxfire book, the hardback edition, which is a lot nicer than the paperback one. Paperback one's really falling apart because it's an older book, printed in 1968, if I remember correctly. But you have right there, Planting by the Signs. Okay, hopefully you can see that. And so they get into this thing of planting by the signs. And um, here on page 212, they show uh, planting by the signs. And they quote Genesis 1.14 and Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 2. Let me show you this quick here. I hope you can see it because it's kind of hard for me to see out here. Excuse me. Right there. And over here on this page, they have this whole chart of uh, all the signs and everything there, the zodiac and what it means and whatever else and stuff. So they say, you know, there you go. It says about signs and seasons and things, and then you're to time to plant, a time to pluck up and all this. So there you go. Planting by the signs. Uh, well, let's actually turn to the scriptures and look and see what the Bible's actually saying. Um, there's a lot of people in witchcraft that will actually steal verses from scripture and try to use it to prove their system. They use it as a magical incantation and not actually look at the context of what's going on. And that's a lot of what's going on in here. There's a lot of witchcraft in this book. A lot of the older people down there, down south, actually practiced witchcraft. We'll get more into that here in just a minute. But, um, and again, I can prove that. That's not my opinion. But let's go to Genesis chapter 1 and actually see what's going on there. What is this signs and seasons thing all about? Genesis 1 verse 14, And God said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. Okay, did it say anything about zodiac? No. Did it say anything about that the stars would be, you know, you look at the stars and the, and the signs of the... Yeah. No, no. Signs and seasons. Okay, and let's see what the context is here. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day, we're in right now, and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth, and to rule over the day and over the night, and to divide the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. So what do you have? You have... The difference between day and night. That's the signs and seasons there. Okay? Why? As you go into winter, there's less sunlight and more night. So guess what? What do plants need to grow? Sunlight. So don't plant in the winter time. Okay? Has nothing to do with the zodiac. Oh, this is a special time this and the and the you know this is rising and, and what it's just simply saying it's winter time. There's less sunlight. Don't plant then. Okay? Day and night is what the passage is talking about. And as far as you say, what about the stars? Oh, what about the stars? Well, most people, most modern people don't understand that, in fact, when you live in an area where there's not many street lights, you can actually see pretty good at night because of the light of the stars and the moon. Out here where we live, we don't have any street lights on our property there's no electric electricity available at our land here and there's very few street lights in the area and you can see a lot of stars and the moon at night especially in the winter time you can walk around in the middle of the night and you don't even need a flashlight or anything else there is light that comes from the moon and the stars again it's not saying that you should look at the star constellations and say, oh, that's Capricorn, and this is Cancer, and this is that, and, and oh, I should do this, and I should do that, and whatever else. That's an, being an observer of times, being an astrologer, which your Bible condemns, which I'll show you here in just a little bit. Okay? If you're falling for this planning by the signs of the zodiac thing, you are in sin, very serious sin. 
you are basically involved in witchcraft. Okay? Uh, let's look at the other one, though. Ecclesiastes chapter 3. They quoted Genesis 1.14 and Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 and 2. Let's go over there and I'll show you that one. And why it too does not work for their little system. Ecclesiastes 3 verses 1 and 2. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. They say, well, see, you get the signs and the seasons and the stars in Genesis 1, and then you just hop on over here to Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2, and it says a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted. Oh, see, it's the zodiac. No, it's not. Okay. It's talking about day and night there and when they're changing when it gets darker earlier and everything else you're going into winter pluck up that which is planted that's all that it's saying there it's not saying that you do special things with the, the certain star constellations and everything else that stuff is of the occult okay let me show you some further proof of that you want to hand me the foxfire book there Here you have, I showed that thing already, the, the whole um, T.E. Black's Lifetime Planting Business and Fishing Guide, a page from that, and it's actually, the book is called uh, God's Way. <laughs> uh, maybe the God of this world, but uh, certainly not the God of the Bible. But here it's uh, plate 238. It says the sign is Aries, symbol ram, body part head, planet Mars, element fire. Uh-oh. The next element, earth. The next, air. The next, water. Uh, uh-oh. What is that? These different el elements. Uh, witchcraft. Earth, air, fire, water. That's witchcraft. <laughs> no, oh no. It's in the Bible. It's in the Bible. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> it's witchcraft. Well, I'm a Christian and I, I plant by the signs. Uh, you're planting by witchcraft. And let me just say this, this whole thing of, well, I've planted by the signs and I've seen it. It works. It works. If the devil can get you to do something contrary to God's word, he will oftentimes make some magical things happen or at least deceive your mind into thinking that they're happening so he can turn you, so God can turn you against, or so he can turn God against you. Say it that way. You're in sin and God will turn against you. All of a sudden you'll have some bad things happening. You'll have to do counter spells and whatever else. Uh, there are parts of witchcraft that I'm sure work very well. Uh, because you're being deceived by Satan. Just the way it is. But there, here's one thing I love. Okay, they're talking to all these, these uh, hillbillies down there and they say, and I'm not against hillbillies, you know. You understand what I'm saying. These Some of these people are have rocks for brains in here. Um, some are very intelligent. Again, being from the South doesn't have anything to do with that, but but I, I love this one. Don't plant potatoes in the feet. The time of the feet there. If you do, they will develop little nubs like toes all over the main potato. Here we go. The best time is a dark night in March. Um... It just so happens to be that right now is the month of March here in northern Maine. Um, out here is actually a field. There's an old house site right over there where those birch trees are uh, back in there. And that big fir tree there and then to the right of it there was an old house right there. This is a field. Some of this stuff is just scrubby growth and whatever else. Some, some uh, willow I think it is. And uh, type of willow. And these things weren't here. This was actually a field, an old field where they used to grow potatoes. Truth. I actually talked to the guy that was raised in that house that burned down back in the 1960s. He was raised here on this property. They grew potatoes. Um, the best time to plant is a dark night in the month of March, according to the signs of the zodiac. I don't think that's going to work for us. So much for the zodiac there. Uh, we got about three feet of snow on the ground here. I don't think I'm going to be digging down there and planting potatoes this month. In fact, for more than probably about two months yet. You say, well, that's because northern Maine's not very fertile and the growing season's not very good. They can't grow potatoes up there anyhow. Uh, except for the fact that 
Northern Maine used to be the biggest potato grower growing area in the entire country for a while till Idaho, you know, took over. But there's still, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons of potatoes that come out of Northern Maine and not one of them is planted in March. So much for the uh, Zodiac thing there. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's going to work too good. Well, the, the signs are in the feet and you got to plant the potatoes. No, you don't. Okay. <laughs> that's a problem. But let me hand this over to my wife here again. Um, you say, well, the, but the, the scriptures actually condemn the thing of planting by the signs and doing things by the signs. Yes, it does. Let me show you here. Old Testament, Deuteronomy 18. Deuteronomy 18, verse 9 through 14. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times, hmm, or an enchanter, or a witch. Earth, air, fire, water, yeah. Or a charmer, or a consulter with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. Notice they're all kind of tied together there. Well, I plant by the signs, but I'm not into witchcraft. I plant by the signs, but I'm not into necromancy or wizardry or whatever. Uh, you're quite deceived. Those are just different lures that are being used by the same being named Satan to catch you. Because you're gullible. You don't understand it. Verse 12, for all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess, hearken unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for thee, the Lord thy God hath not suffered thee so to do. Well, these things are in the Bible. Oh, you're twisting the scriptures. Planting by the signs is unscriptural. It is satanic. It's of the devil. And if you mess with that stuff, God's not going to prosper you. Okay? Just as simple as that. Now let's look at Isaiah. The book of Isaiah, chapter 47. You know, it's, 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 you know, reading about this stuff, it's just kooky. You know, oh, well, when the, when this sign happens, you know, you got to be out there planting in the middle of the night or whatever else and uh, you got to get up, you got to get it done or else it's not going to work. And you got to, you know, you got to split your firewood or saw your firewood at this certain sign or else it's not going to dry correctly. Or you got to do this thing here, or milk your cow or do this thing or that thing. Bunch of witchcraft. And if you say, well, well, I'm a Christian, it's not witchcraft to me. Well, then why would Paul write over in Galatians chapter 5 about the lusts of the flesh are manifest, which are these? And he lists witchcraft and he says about they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. He's talking to saved people. Saved people can get involved in witchcraft and not really even understand what they're doing. Not even realize it. You better be careful. Isaiah 47 Verses 12 through 15, let's read that. Stand now with thine enchantments, and with the multitude of thy sorceries, wherein thou hast labored from thy youth. If so be, thou shalt be able to profit, if so be, thou mayest prevail. Thou art wearied in the multitude of thy counsels. Let now the astrologers, the stargazers, the monthly prognosticators, stand up and save thee from these things that shall come upon thee. Behold, they shall be as stubble, the fire shall burn them, they shall not deliver themselves from the power of the flame. There shall not be a coal to warm at, nor fire to sit before it. Thus shall they be unto thee which, with whom thou hast labored, even thy merchants from thy youth. They shall wander every one to his quarter. None shall save thee. Now, I don't know the story of what happened here on this property. But I know for a fact, I don't know if these people that were farming here, I didn't ask the guy that grew up here. I don't know if he even knew. But... I know for a fact that this farm that was here back in the 1960s, um, I know it burned to the ground. The remains are still right over there. You can find the kitchen sink, cast iron kitchen sink. We found it over there. A lot of the old pots and pans and, and glass and whatever else burned to the ground and the people walked away from the property. And it was sold and resold and sold and then we bought it um, from some people that nobody lived here on the land, in other words, since the 1960s. 
you know, ironically, shortly before the whole Foxfire book thing was written. But if these people messed around with the signs of the Zodiac, I find it interesting that God burned the farm to the ground and they left. Nothing's left. Hmm, rather interesting. Uh, you would do well not to mess around with the whole signs of the Zodiac thing and I, I got a plant by the phases of the moon or whatever else. Don't mess with it. Don't mess with it. Well, my grandfather was a great Christian man and he'd, he was in sin. Remember, Galatians chapter 5, a Christian can mess around with witchcraft. Don't mess with it. I'm telling you, there's no scripture for this stuff. But let me show you another thing here, finally, from the Foxfire book. Switch the Bible with my wife there. Another one of the things here that they have, faith healing. Right there. And uh, what they get into here, um, show you the beginning of the chapter here. Page uh, 346 is when it starts, right there. And they get into this thing, and there's these older people, and there's Lester Norton, and he talks about that he knows, you know, faith healers and whatnot. And then you have this a healer, Mrs. Andy Webb. She's actually claiming that she can do this. There she is there. And there's her husband, Mr. Andy Webb. And there's another one, Aunt Nora Garland. All these older people from the late 1960s. Probably very nice people and whatever else. But they get into this thing of they can do three different things. They can cure thrash or thrush, which is blisters breaking out on the mouth of a child. Um, they can they can stop bleeding from happening in animals or people and they can also draw fire out of a burn so if you have a burn on your arm they can do this thing and they can draw the fire out of it um, and they get into this thing it's, they, they keep saying it's in the bible it's in the bible all you got to do is you get this verse of scripture and you memorize it and then you burn the verse of scripture and you don't tell anybody about it and you just say it silently that's witchcraft you say, well, how do you know that? Oh, how do you know? Because it's called Powwow Magic. Long Lost Friend is the name of the book. I did a whole review on it. That the Amish are the same ones. They, they practice the same thing. They practice this magic. And it is some dark, twisted, satanic stuff. Including boiling a living cat. One of the spells that's in this book. And it was written by a Albertus Magnus, if I remember correctly. A Catholic priest and theologian. Back centuries ago. Yeah, show the proof in my study. You can watch it. I'll put links at the end of the video. Um, but you, you got to watch out for this stuff, okay? Now, do I recommend this book? Yeah, it's some neat stuff in here, okay? Uh, you can look through this thing, see how they built log homes, and you can understand the thing of a lot of these people were very self-sufficient, very neat. You know, the Great Depression was going on, and a lot of them were saying, yeah, we were fine. We had plenty to eat. People in the city are jumping off buildings because they lost everything in the stock market, coming soon to a city near you. and um, But the people out in the country are just able to grow their own food and whatever else. Self-sufficiency. These books are great for that. But as far as the faith healing thing and the planning by the signs, it's witchcraft. That's all it is. And like I said, if you're doing this stuff and you claim to be a Christian, you are involved in witchcraft. Don't make excuses for it. Stop doing it. Um, you know, again, this, this, uh, drawing blood out thing and whatever else, and another one of the signs that it's witchcraft is they say you can pass it down from generation to generation, but a man has to teach a woman and a woman has to teach a man. That's witchcraft. That's what it is. Study the thing. It's witchcraft, you know, and I can show all these quotes in the long lost friend, this book, long lost friend, the, the powwow magic stuff. So... <laughs> Um, good books, but watch out for the witchcraft in them. So, um, just hope and pray that you take heed to these things if you're out there and, uh, mess around with the Zodiac stuff and whatever. Be careful. And, uh, just another thing I need to kick while I'm here on this issue of the Zodiac is there was a very wicked satanic false prophet who came out and was trying to predict the date of the rapture. Maybe, possibly, could be, um, it could happen and he was using the signs of the Zodiac, uh, particularly Virgo. 
the virgin, that you're going to see her in heaven and you're going to see this thing happening and this thing, and it could be the rapture, September 23rd, and everything else. Won't mention, I, I won't mention Robert Breaker's name, so I, you know, not into that stuff. I don't name Robert Breaker's name because naming names is just, I shouldn't do that. So you'll just have to figure out who Robert Breaker is. I can't say the name. Sarcasm, a little sarcasm warning should come up. Um, you know, funny too because the world promotes him, the world loves him. You know, they give him lots and lots of subscribers. Don't even tell me 300,000 people watch the guy. Give me a break. <laughs> what a joke. You know, I get kicked by an atheist website and I point out the fact that they don't even have a page on Robert Breaker, even though his, his uh, <coughs> ministry <coughs> uh, dwarfs mine, and yet he's not a threat to atheists. And what do they do on this stupid atheist website? They come out and defend Robert Breaker. <laughs> they are of the world, therefore the world, world heareth them. Yeah. Um, and the false prophecy that Robert Breaker made, uh, and it was a prophecy, and he had a lot of people worked up about it. Um, in the Old Testament, him failing at that prophecy would have meant death penalty for him as a false prophet. So... Uh, you see people messing around with the Zodiac and the signs of the Zodiac and the astrology and whatever else. Get away from them. They're an abomination in God's sight. Okay? So that is going to be it. Thank you for watching. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214. Hatton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.